Next, we have Native Invader, the newest album from Tori Amos. Um, so yeah, if you're familiar with Tori Amos, well, if you're a fan of Tori Amos, you certainly won't be disappointed with this album because it's very much in keeping with her her style, uh, the typical, very intriguing blend of styles of pop and electronica with the more Baroque chamber music that she's got going. Um, there's sort of gospel styles and uh, it is a very politically charged album. Uh, yeah, they just want to listen to it and a lot of kind of environmentalist stuff going on as well. Yeah, well... Yeah, politically charged in the sense that Native Invader is in reference to Tori Amos herself. She is part Native American, and obviously, with all the things that have been going on with the Native Americans, she's going to... she's not going to be especially happy. Um... I mean, it's because of the various concepts that she'll explore in her songs, which is why I decided she had to go into the we don't know what to classify this as section, because she never really explores concepts that are wholly pop music concepts. They're rather oblique and elaborate. Yeah, hi, Tara. It's, I guess, kind of classical with the pop for the most part but well i think i i believe she's described as well this album itself is described as alternative rock baroque pop chamber pop classical electronica and pop rock so th- as i say all kinds of stuff yeah this is why I don't bother classifying her as anything other than it's Tori Amos. Maybe that's the same kind of thing I have with Tay Calafina, because oh, there are so many fucking styles for this stuff. Jesus. Mm. Change it up a lot. Yeah. Just depending on song. It seems to be kind of similar here. Mm. There's a lot of damn good stuff on this album, actually. Yeah. Uh, ones that really stand out to me are songs like Up the Creek and Bang. Bang stood out to me a lot, yeah. I think, yeah, Bang, um... Claire Riders, the single she released, is pretty fine as well. Reindeer King had a very strong start. Mm. Also long as well, being seven minutes long. Yeah. Reindeer King, um, it does feel very cold, appropriately so, but in a good way. You know, it's all, it was one of the songs that when I saw her live, because she only played like two or three songs from this album. Uh, one was Russia, the other was Reindeer King. Um... I think she also played Bang, but I wouldn't like to say for certain. But this was in the Albert Hall, and if you've ever been in the Albert Hall, you'll know that there's kind of a strange chill at certain points in it. Albert Hall is a damn good venue. Mm. I was there for a distant world last month. So. Yeah. And it just really worked with Reindeer King. It just emphasised this very cold, chilling feeling. I think it's a kind of very, very you know, vocal heavy song. Um, Come on with the piano. It's, yeah. It's kind of eerie, I guess. Hmm. That's probably one of my favourite songs on the album. There it is. I wouldn't really be able to say with any degree of certainty what my favourite songs on the album are. I, I really like Climb. Mainly because it kind of has a defiant hope sound to it. You know, there's a lot of pessimism infused in this album and righteous fury but climb has that sort of hopeful feel to it mm, i suppose kind of the title is probably going to just, you know, climb out of your climb out of the shit mm. shove it yourself out of the shit uh, um uh, the thing about this album is it is another one that has bonus tracks which makes things a bit difficult to review because obviously the bonus tracks are specific to the deluxe edition Though fortunately, at least, it's just a deluxe edition bonus tracks instead of, oh, this is Japan's edition, and this is England's edition, and this is... This is Walmart edition. Well, this is an edition specific to Walmart. <laughs> it's happened before on many occasions. Uh, and this is Kuala Lumpur's edition. Why Kuala Lumpur? I don't know! You can only get this album if you happen to fly to Mars to get it. <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. 
you must sacrifice a goat inside the inverted pentagram to get this uh, this third bonus track. The pentagram must be made of jello. <laughs> but not raspberry. Only orange. But yeah, the thing is, the last track, if you include the bonus tracks, is Russia. And that's a very dark song. What's interesting is I think it's one of the only songs in the album that actually includes the album title in the lyrics. Yeah. So having that on a bonus track is kind of weird. Yeah. It's like, wait, wh- wh- why is this only on a bonus track? What? But yeah, the whole thing, the whole idea behind Russia is kind of what it says on the tin. She's basically calling out the whole suggestions of collusion with Putin and all that sort of thing. Politics cast. Yeah. Less said about that, the better. I'm not willing to get into a political debate. It's always part of this class, yeah. Politics cast a clock. <laughs> it's very difficult not to become politics cast when it's a politically charged album. I mean, this is a politically fueled medium, so... Yeah. Um, now, including the bonus tracks, so we consider... Right, I'm going to do this in two ways. If we just have it as Native Invader, no bonus tracks, nothing like that, then I probably wouldn't rearrange anything. If I was to include the bonus tracks, I would have Upside Down 2 as the closer. It is. Mainly because Russia feels far too dour as a follow-on. It's one of those I'd want to close with an uplifting song, but I know what Tori Amos is like. There was actually this bit during her gig, um, she performed Little Earthquakes. Now, Little Earthquakes is a very dark album. It's one of those ones where there's like two happy tracks on the album and the rest is sort of like, oh dear God, my heart. But she said about how she was performing it at a birthday party and Neil Gaiman was there and... Neil Gaiman told her that he'd never seen so many unhappy faces at a birthday party as when she was performing Little Earthquakes. <laughs> so... Yeah, I must admit, looking through this album, a lot of these songs are not exactly of the happy variety. Mm. But knowing what Tori Amos is like, she probably deliberately put Russia at the end to give this very cold and uncertain feeling. You know, it's sort of reflecting what the attitude is in the world in general. Just having this very unsettling feeling to close the album. That was probably deliberate. That's the no non-bonus tracks. I think Mary's Eyes is a good ending, the regular version. Yeah, definitely. Um... It kind of has a bit of a Wind Cries Mary feel to it. I'm not sure if you follow me with that. I don't. Um, basically, the whole thing with Wind Cries Mary is it's a mournful, wistful, but ultimately uplifting song. And Mary's Eyes kind of has that feel going for it as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the bonus tracks are definitely worth listening to. But I'd personally say that you can just listen to them separate from the album. You don't really need the context, because they do stand on their own. There's a lot of bonus tracks. Mm. I mean, Mary's Eyes, I definitely agree, works well as a closer. Uh, If you do want to continue, I'd say switch around the order with between Russia and Upside Down 2 just to, you know, make yourself feel a bit happy after how Tori Amos would have come down on you with a sledgehammer of feel. (laughs) I won't deny, I am a Tori Amos fanboy, so that might just be my personal attitude towards her music that I'm coming out with comments like that. But I do feel that because of how much raw emotion is in her songs, that it does very often feel like it's just, have all of these sandbags a pure feel. (laughs) Oh, and these concrete shoes. And jump in the river. (laughs) But yeah, um, what would you give it out of five? Uh, I'm going to have a version towards 3.5 right now, I think. Um, personally, I'd go four. Uh, again, I I won't deny my score is probably because 
of being a major Tori Amos fan and knowing that she has had odd missteps, but through her catalogue, this is a very strong addition. Mm. Well, I haven't really heard much of her work other than the occasional song here and there, so... Mm. A lot of her stuff you probably heard through the walls from me. <laughs> Quite possible, yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought this album was pretty strong. Uh, and then maybe we'll go back and check out some of her other stuff, because there's definitely a lot of quality material. Yeah. You just put out a shitload of stuff, so... <laughs> uh, this is... There should be something else somewhere that's going to be decent. Uh, this is her 15th album. Yeah, it's a lot of material. Uh, yeah. Definitely, if you're a Tori Amos fan, if you're just a fan of sort of more piano-driven stuff, this is definitely a go-to. Piano is a quality instrument, yeah. Uh, next. All around. 